So what we're seeking to do is a is a work in progress. And um, with the Torah portion readings and feedings, now we're at the third reading or the third portion, which Bamarinya we call it Kaleite Wutka. And in the in the Hebrew it's a uh, lek leka lek leka. Now lek leka is the third portion or the third reading. Well, first of all, lek leka in the Hebrew. When we're going to approach this from what's out there and what is the prevailing ideas concerning Judaism, concerning these various different Torah portions, and then augment that and supplement that from an Ethiopic perspective with our Ethiopian Hebrew documentation, you could uh, turn documentation, um, such as the Queen of Sheba and Olympus and Minulik. We highlighted that a little briefly in the Noah or Noah portion, which was the second portion, as well as studying the Metaf Kedus of Negus and Neges, um, and dealing with some of the Targum and translation. But since there's, you know, since there's much to this, what we like to always do is to, first of all, begin to give, give an overview and begin with some of the basics so one can understand the basic, uh, the context, you know. And then there's a lot of details, and there are certain nuances of interpretation that's not so much about you right, I'm wrong, but it's what we are seeing in the nuance of interpretation that gives a higher um, density or high definition. It's like the new TVs now that they have, the plasma TVs, they call them 1080. What's interesting because 1080 is a perfect trinity, 1080, if we would look at that for a moment. And you know, it's a Torah portion, let's touch on this. Some might see it like that, although in the last presentation we saw it, we dealt with something to this effect, where these three circles, but each one is 360 degrees, right? And this, this is also can help teach in the new um, document, Go Him, or the Gospel of His Imperial Majesty. We have um, one of the discipleship charts, and I think it's in one of the videos we recently put out that we touched on the three ciphers, the three circles, or um, uh, explication of the Trinity as far as the Trinity above and then the Trinity in man as well as the, the approach to the sense of place, you understand, or the approach within to return, return to God or return to that harmony, that balance with the Almighty. Um, as a son or a daughter of God. Now, anyway, the 360, if you look at the 360, you got one, you got two, you got three. And if you add the 360 times three, basically you will have the 1080. Now, 1080 is what they call the new TVs. They said the new TVs are 1080 in plasma. Plasma, you know, it's in the blood. Plasma is in the blood. And in the Greek, plasma means a fiction. Now, that's just some of the... Some reference points, if you study it, you'll find there's some very interesting um, explications of that. But that's going a little bit outside of what we want to reason on now. We just want to give that, that sort of a background that these particular teachings that we're presenting and Torah portions are to give us some, a good overview. And we're coming out with some new documentation, one on the Hebrew, for the Torah portions, one on the Hebrew book of... Um, the Hebrew book of Genesis, or Bereis Sheet, as some Jews pronounce it, more correctly, correcting it by the Ethiopic who say Bereisit or Bereisit. You understand? Bereis in the Gutis means Aras in the Amharic. So it means Rosh or Rosh in the Hebrew, referring to the head or the beginning or the summit of something. So we've begun a new cycle of Torah portion reading. And this, this uh, Torah portion, it was a Torah portion that was to be read or beginning this particular week, which is um, November 5th, from November 5th. And November 5th was the seventh day in the week, and that was the Shabbat day, the Saturday. And now on the Sunday, 
What's important, some may think, well, it's Sabbath day versus Sunday. That's only if one doesn't have the matter in the proper context. That it's the seventh day that completes the week, and it's the first day that even the early Christian, the Christian notes, the early Christians gathered together after remembering and keeping the Shabbat day holy. So, in other words, if we were to gather together as a, as a group, say in, on the Saturday, ones would, you know, either spend it in the Mikorah, the synagogue, or in, in their homes, and just took the, that day as a particular rest day, a particular remembrance day, a set-aside day, read scripture, chant prayers, or just relax and do, you know, do no occupational labor, what they would do for the other six days. Because in order to keep the seventh day, yet to kedeset, this means as a prerequisite that the other six days must be about some particular occupation or some particular um, activity. You know, when Christ said the priests in the tabernacle were exempt, it was because just in a sense, as I and I, we're about this work in a continuous. So even though on the Shabbat day, many days, we are still either recording, researching, and one can say working is a high aspect of work, that is for the, the commonwealth and the common good. This is why Christ said that the priests in the tabernacle, when they violate the Sabbath, in other words, when they're still working, you understand, they are exempt from that. But in the, in the collective community sense of, of the majority of the people, you understand, because each one of us as brethren have an opportunity in an organized society to, as even Zechariah and others in the scripture, fulfill a course, you know, a course of service. Once we're properly orientated and acquainted and educated and willing to make our wills obedient to good influences, then that responsibility for the community's ben benefit, spiritual as well as temporal benefit, is what's important. Now, anyway, um, let us continue, because this is the third, the third, uh, Shabbat portion, and as we mentioned before, we utilize the wiki, the Wikipedia, um, the Wikipedia um, free encyclopedia is a good reference for some of these themes, for some of the Hebraic and Judaic themes, and helping us at a basic level to become familiar with these particular themes. And as you know, this particular document that we hope to update um, soon, and also augment it with some of the dates so one can understand um, which portion is read for which Shabbat date. This all has to do with the calendar. It all has to do with the Hebraic calendar and, and God, John's calendar, which is the heavens. And because we're in a, a fringe or a foreign way of living in this present time, speaking of um, in the captivities and in the shitty, so forth and so on, um, we... we we're unfamiliar, not acquainted with the stars and the heavens. Once we return to the, to the proper context of our blessing and liberty, we return to the land, you see, and we return to that first kingdom. The first kingdom is the, is the agrarian or the agricultural society, in other words, returning to the land. But true, we as lost sheep, once lost but now found data, Israel and many of our lost people, must first of all get over the curse. You see, the curse is that slave and that nigger mentality. That nigger mentality basically tells the nigger that I ain't going back to picking no cotton and, 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 and going back to the country and, 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 you know, that life because they've run from that. So black folks are in a frozen psychological state. This is why the, the teaching and the ministering and, and the preaching of the good news, first of all, the learning of the good news is so important. So we can really see why we as a people are doing what we're doing. There's a connection to it. And the key in Torah and the scriptures, the king of kings and his Christ, the teaching of his imperial majesty, is the key for us. So it's for us to submit ourselves, you understand, and to make our wills obedient, you understand. And, and that's an individual choice. And then those individuals who choose when they come together collectively, then the true work, job works, can truly begin. So each of us has an individual as well as a collective um, responsibility in this matter. So with that being said, um, there's some new documentations that are coming out. Um, 
we hope to publish them soon on Bereshit, which would actually be the 12 portions, taking some of the Wikipedia notes as an as a initial starting point and publishing them in one volume. Because what we've done before is sometimes print out the various pages. And, you know, this documentation evidence is free. But what we're going to do is go over these things and, as we say, rightly align them from our Ethiopic or Ethiopian Hebrew perspective as we do in these particular teachings and have been doing, I think going on, this would be perhaps the third year or the third cycle that we have been about this. So ministering in this way, we're going into that third, that third year or that third cycle and some of our videos and the videos of Ethiopian World and the Line of Judah are available so you can actually probably look up Lek Leka previously or the, the RSS, the Rastafari Sabbath um, studies number three and find that, find maybe last year's version and perhaps the year before that as well. But now in this um, third portion, let's write the Hebrew up here. So in the Hebrew, you can write it like this. It'll be, um, it'll be uh, Lek, you understand, Lek, uh, uh, Lek, Lek, you could make the leg a little shorter, Lek. Some would say it'd be Lek, Lek. One way of reading is Lek, Lek. You understand when we look at the voweling, um, the vowel points and everything, the root and all these other vowel points that they give it, um, and the schwa, you understand? So they call this, this would be Lek, you understand? And this one right here would be um, um, Lek. Le and with the patak, you understand with the patak, this would be um, lek or lek le le ka. Now I'm I'm writing the Hebrew forward, but I have to write and in the English underneath backwards. You understand? So actually, this would be lek. You read it this way, lek. You understand? Lek le ka, lek le ka. Now lek le ka is the is our RSS or Rastafari Sabbath study number three, or is the third? It's the third sabbatical, the third sabbatical portion. Now, Bamarinya, or in the Amharic, in the Amharic, if you go to our chart right here, um, at number three right here, this is called Tele Te Wita, Tele Te Wita, number three on page four of the Sabbath house readings as we suggest the brothers and sisters download it so that at least they can have a, a study guide for, for these particular studies and for the, um, the weekly sabbatical portions. Now for some more of the details we suggest the Wikipedia page that we utilize here and we're going to publish some of this in, in documents for each book because there's 12 particular portions when we get to Shemot which is the 13th at the 13th, we're coming to Exodus. At the 13th, Sabbath is at Exodus, so called Bamarinya, called Simoch in the Amharic, or in the Hebrew, it's called Shemot. Shemot, Simoch. All right? So this portion um, consists, uh, constitutes, constitutes Genesis chapter 12 and 1 to Genesis chapter 17, verse 27, and we as Hebrews and the OJs or the other Jews as well, they read it on the third Sabbath or the third Shabbat or Senbet after the Simchat Torah or what we call the Orit Desita, Desita, the joy of the Orit, the joy of Torah. And this is generally in, in October or November, October or November. All right, but now let's touch on what what is the meaning of this. I think you you all already have this. We could probably um um take this down. We just want to explain you know explain the 1080 as far as as far as um, high definition. You know, first you saw it the 360, the 360, the first cipher, and then you you take it another another level, and then at that third cipher you can get that um, 1080 or certain steps mystical and metaphysical, certain mystical and metaphysical steps. But with that being said, let us take this down for a moment so we can have more room to uh, address 
this. And we have a second portion or a further portion of this that we actually recorded before since this portion actually also deals with um, the subject matter of circumcision. And there's some important notes on circumcision. I think it's a two or three part, kind of a longer part, but it's based on the word picture, word picture presentation that hopefully ones and ones will find informative and interesting. But first of all, let's get to the meaning. What's the meaning of lik lika um, or lek lika? It means in the Hebrew to go or to leave or to go for. To go, this is being the the Sabbath, Sabbath number three, all right, Sabbath number three in this particular year, 2011, that would, that would be aligned with November 5th, 2011, for this year, remember, it's according to the, the lunar reckoning, the, the position of, of, of the, of the moon, you understand, the new moon is how we, calculate the months and the times and the seasons as Genesis chapter 1 verse 14 Genesis chapter 1 verse verse uh, 14 is what shows us that the heavens not to worship the so-called stars or the celestial sign not to consider them gods or anything you don't worship you don't worship the number signs on your clock or do you you know you don't worship the, your clock but the clock helps you keep in a certain timing. And one of the main reasons that we are out of this timing is because of the, the, foreign, the foreign way of living or the strange way of living that we as the once lost but now found Beta Israel, the black sheep of the family, are living. So we're living in a foreign, we're living in the, as the Bible says, the image of the beast. You know, say we're not living in the image that our God and King of Kings has created us in from the very beginning but we're living in a, a strange way of living. For example, m morning, morning and evening is considered a day, but according to the scriptures, evening and morning. So with that in mind, let us just continue with this. Um, sometimes we feel a need to just refresh some of the basics, you know, because ones will say, yes, yes, okay, I know that, I heard that, but then really don't know how it all goes together and how it operates in a system. So you may have heard it, but it's, it, it connects with other truth. So that truth about the heavens are, is God's calendar. The heavens are God's calendar. So this is what shows us is for signs, for seasons, and for days, and for years. So that question about when do we read which particular portion, or when we get to the additional um, parashio for the holy days, right here, it was at the beginning of Rosh Hashanah. In fact, we're at this particular point right now, after Sim Simchat Torah. If you go to page 9, you will find Simchat Torah, and we are, we, we've already completed so far, just in this, just, in, just since September, roughly the September 11th, September 12th, after that time, which was the Ethiopian New Year and then the Hebraic New Year began thereafter, we've already completed from Rosh Hashanah, or the Yom Teruah, all, Yom Kippur, the Sukkot, the days of Sukkot, the Sukkot, um, the Chol Ma'od, or the intermediate days, the Sukkot the Shabbat, um, the the Hoshana Rabbah, the Shemeni Atzeret, and now the Simchat Torah. Now, as you will read here on the on the wiki site, as well as as you will learn, if you study this, that that this is the third, this is the third portion of the third uh, sabbatical reading, the Parasha or the Orit Nebab, after Simchat Torah. So Simchat Torah, it becomes an important, an important marker. You understand? So it, 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 takes some, it takes some familiarity, some studies. But it's very, it, it all makes sense. The thing that really doesn't make sense is the way that we're living in Babylon. That's what really doesn't make sense. When we start to understand this, in some sense, some of us have said, no wonder the OJs are in the position that they are in in this present time, the, the so-called other Jews. So we have to once again reclaim, you understand, um, our, our be grafted in, as it were. We are that natural olive tree, 
so the natural branches rather that must be grafted in again. But what Yahweh did was graft in wild olives, speaking about the OJs or the other Jews. He was saying within that natural tree that we were grafted into, but because of disobedience from our ancestors to our present time, those natural branches were broken off, and therefore we went astray, and therefore we ended up, our ancestors and us ended up in this land which is not our own. And that, that's a very important theme, that we're in a land that is not our own because actually this is what, we, what was told to our, our father, our ancestor, Abraham, in this, particular, in this particular portion. So let's deal with some of the contents. What are some of the contents of this particular Torah portion? Okay, firstly, it's, the, it's, it's, it's Abraham's, Abram's, right, Abram's call, or the calling of Abraham, right? Secondly, it is what we call the sister wife, the sister wife, right? We have the sister wife, right, or wife as sister. Then we have the issue of Abram or Abraham, but before that he was known as Abram, and Lot, the whole Abram and Lot and the division, the particular division of the land that would take place. Then we have the fourth matter. The fourth matter is the war. We have a war. There's, there's, there's a war. Let's take this off. RSS, you know, to the Rastafari Sabbatical Study or Sabbath number three. Um, let's put this over here. We have number four, the fourth matter is the war between the four kings and the five. We have what we call the war of four over five, of the four over five kings, right? Then we have as the fifth matter, we have the covenant. The fifth matter is the covenant, the covenant between the pieces, the covenant between the pieces of the it of the sacrifice, and we're going to hopefully be able to explain that as well. These are the various different subject matters that are contained in this particular Sabbath reading and feeding, and we have the entire week actually beginning on, of course, the Shabbat day, the seventh day, and usually in a community sense, the community would gather on that first day as Christians so-called gather on the Sunday after keeping the Sabbath day set apart as a rest day. And they would usually hear either a, a sermon, you understand, uh, or a homily concerning these particular teachings and how they affect the community in the particular time or region or area that they are in. So this is what we also seek to do. But the first thing we need to become familiar with, well, what does it say? And, and then we can then say, well, what is the truth of that? What evidence we have for that? And then how does it apply to us as a people in our particular time? What is the relevancy or the resonance for us in the present time? So the sixth and the seventh matter is, is, is sixth matter is Hagar, is Hagar, Right, Hagar, the mother of the so-called Arabs, uh, and, 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 and Ish, Ishma, Ishma, Ishmael, right? And then the seventh matter, sorry we had to write it like this right here, but so it is, is the covenant of circumcision. The seventh matter is the covenant, it's, it's still a covenant, but we're going to write right here because of space, sir, come circumcision, right, circumcision, the covenant of circumcision, right, it's the seventh matter. So basically what we have in this particular sabbatical portion is one, Abraham's call, or Abraham's call, secondly, the sister wife or the wife as sister, thirdly is Abraham and Lot or Abraham and Lot divide the land. Then we have fourthly the war of the four kings over the five, what we call the war of four over five, or four against five. The fifth matter is the matter of the, the covenant or the covenant between the pieces of the sacrifice, the covenant between the pieces. Very important here. Then the sixth matter, we have Hagar, Hagar and her son Ishmael, the wild ass of a man or the progenitor of the, the Harab or the Arab 
people today, and there's a resonance with what's going on with terrorism and Ishmael and, and the Arab and Islam, with, if we go back to the beginning. Then the seventh matter is circumcision. At the seventh matter of this particular um, Sabbath reading and feeding is the circumcision. Now, in certain forms of Judaism or, or communal Judaism among certain Jews, whether we or the OJs, the other um, Jews, the non-ethnic Jews, we are the ethnic or the black Jews, the Ethiopian Hebrews, these seven portions would be considered portions of reading. In other words, Aliyah, where ones would come up and those who, who now have passed their rite of passage and can read the the holy language of the community with certain uh, Jewish communities, that would be the Hebrew, that would be the bar mitzvah. So a young man who has to pass his bar mitzvah, and he's considered a man responsible in the community, and there are certain um, qualifications. They call it the rite of passage. This is what we as lost sheep and enslaved Ethiopian Hebrews have lost and must reclaim in the present time with the Metaf Kedus and the royal Amharic of the king of kings. So that means we have to study and show ourselves approved. So when a young man is able to come up to read, you understand, the particular sabbatical portion, you understand? This is a great honor. This is kubr. This is a great honor that is bestowed. And not just only being able to read, but that means you are, you, are, you are able to take care of business in the community and business for the community. It's, it's a rite of passage that signifies manhood within society and mature um, responsibilities within the community, and we've touched on it before, or briefly at least, within our Wolde Tizaz, which means what Bar Mitzvah means, or the son or child of commandment, the child of the commandment, which is the beginning step of being a son or a daughter, in that sense, will let to his eyes, or bat mitzvah, a son or a daughter of God. Now, Genesis 12, Genesis 12 and 1 to Genesis 17 and 27 is where these seven, these seven portions in, in uh, Lek Lika, Lek Lika, Bamarinya, to lay to separate with uh, separate and come out. So we get a clarification of the the meaning of leklika in the Amharic and in the Gutas from the Gutas, but right now we're gonna begin with the Met of Kedus, to lay te, the royal Amharic, to lay te separate yourself. So Abraham was told to separate himself, separate himself separate himself and come out. El witta, come out, come out, separate yourself and come out. Now, in the Kubr Neges, the Queen of Sheba and only son Minulik, this is this particular document, and this is um, our, our edition or printing or publishing of the Queen of Sheba and only son Minulik of the Kubr Neges. Now we also have the Gutters of what Wallace Budge translated, so we can actually compare his translation to the original or to the master that he used or a, 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 a version of that, that particular good is, um, master document that has been translated here within the English and for English speakers. And now here if we go to page 9, there is a chapter in the Kuvr Neges that is concerning Abraham. I think this is important before we even get into the, the Hebraic or Judaic breakdown of the seven portions. Let's first of all go to one of our Talmud or Timherit or testimonies to really see, well, what does it say? And then we'll get into what they say, and then we'll meditate and to gain the truth of the matter for ourselves, to, to, to know the truth for ourselves, learn the truth for ourselves, as His Majesty teaches us. So now here at the 13th, 
This is the 13th chapter in the Kibbutz Negesh, the Queen of Sheba, and only from Minyalik, but the Kibbutz Negesh literally means the glory, the glory of kings. But it's interpreted by Wallace, Sir Wallace Budge, as the Queen of Sheba and her only son Minyalik. But here at the 13th chapter of this document, it says, Concerning Abraham, and Tara, or Terra, begot a son and called his name Abraham, or Abram. And when Abraham was 12 years old, his father Terah sent him to sell idols. And Abraham, or Abram, said, These are not gods that can make deliverance. These are not gods that can save, that can make things better, really, you know, or heal. And he took away the idols to sell even as his father had commanded him. And he said to those to whom he would sell them, and this is Abraham, do ye wish to buy God's Elohim, Amalek, that cannot make deliverance, things made of wood and stone and iron and brass, which the hand of an artificer hath made, the hand of a craftsman, or like your dollar bill, a hand of a mason, has made, and they refused to buy the idols from Abraham or Abram because he himself had defamed the images of his father. <laughs> because he de defamed the images of his father. Very curious. It, 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 it reads that way. But let's read on. It says, And as he was returning, he stepped aside from the road. And he set the images down and looked at them and said to them, I wonder now if ye are able to do what I ask you at this moment and whether ye are able to give me bread to eat or water to drink. This is what he asked the idols of his father. And none of them answered him, for they were pieces of stone and wood, and he abused them and heaped revilings upon them, and they spake never a word. He cursed them out. And he buffeted the face of one, and kicked another with his feet. And a third he knocked over and broke to pieces with stones. And he said to them, If ye are unable to deliver yourselves from him that buffeteth you, and ye cannot requite with injury him that injureth you, how can you be called gods? How can you be called Elohim? Hmm. Then he turned his face to the east, <laughs> looked to the east. Then Abraham, Abraham, Malet, he turned his face to the east, and he stretched out his hands, and he said, Be thou my God. O Lord, creator of heaven and the earth, creator of the sun and the moon, creator of the sea and the dry land, maker of the majesty of the heavens and the earth, and of that which is visible and that which is invisible, O maker of the universe, be thou my God. Be Elohe, be Amlakie, be my God, Amlakie. I place my trust in thee, and from this day forth I will place my trust in none other save thyself. Save thyself. Save thyself. Save thyself. Hmm. There's an interesting ring to that. Right? And when there appeared to him a chariot of fire, a chariot of what? A chariot of fire, which blazed, and Abraham was afraid and, 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 and fell on his face on the ground. He prostrated. Sigurd, Sigurd, Sigurd. He prostrated. And Elohim said to him, Fear thou not. Stand upright. Stand upright, and he removed fear from him. He removed fear from him. Interesting. Now, the 14th, that's the end of the 13th chapter.
And, and, and see, now this is concerning this particular Torah portion or understanding now the context of the Torah portion that we have in the Hebrew Bible, you understand, called Lik Lika, and in the Metaf Kedus, the Book of the Seven Seals of His Imperial Majesty, or the Amharic Torah, the Amharic or Rit Teleite Wutta. This is the background context. Now, it says to compare with Genesis uh, 15 and 1, 15 and 1, and that's contained in this particular Torah portion, reading and feeding, that we hope to get into a little bit more detail over, we can say, the next uh, six or so days, the next six days within this seven-day cycle. Now, uh, chapter 14 says concerning the covenant, of Abraham concerning, so this is concerning Abraham. So this is actually all a part of Abraham, some of the background of Abraham's call. So in a sense, from an Ethiopic perspective, in this RSS number three, um, we're addressing Abraham's call by referring to the Kibbutz and the Gas, the, the Queen of Sheba and only son Minulik, or the glory of kings. Now we're going to go to chapter 14. Now in chapter 14, and now after this, we'll get more into the, the Hebrew book of Genesis, what the OJs or the other Jews say, and then to cross compare and contrast with our Ethiopian Hebrew perspective. Now, chapter 14 says, concerning the covenant of Abraham, and God, Elohim, held converse with Abraham, and he said to him, fear thou not. From this day thou art my servant, and I will establish my covenant with thee and with thy seed after thee, and I will multiply thy seed, and I will magnify thy name exceedingly. Now this is true. We have the three so-called uh, mono um, monophistic or mono, uh, uh, monotheistic um, religions, um, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, all refer highly to Abraham. So now there's a, a, another research that we might not have opportunity to get into now, but you can probably look it up and find some more information about it on the Internet. Um, it's called the God of Abraham, a mathematician's view. And it's very interesting. It even helps to explain somewhat the hands of his majesty. You understand when we get into the God of Abraham, a mathematician's, a mathematician's view and understand the emperor's new mind, in other words. But let's continue right here. So here, Yahweh, or rather he was not known as yod he wow he to Abraham. Abraham knew of him as Ha-Elohim, as El-Shaddai, but did not know of him by the name of yod he wow he But be it all the same, he knew of him and he was chosen. He was chosen to be the servant of the true God, of Ha-Shem, of Ha-Elohim. Baruchu. And his covenant, and the covenant, the Al Kidan, the Benai Barit, was established with our ancestor, with our father Abraham, with him and with his seed, and with that black seed. This is the key with that black seed after him. And I will multiply thy seed, will multiply thy black seed as well as the spiritual seed. In other words, those who are not black, both for the ethnic and the spiritual seed, would be multiplied and would magnify thy name exceedingly as a, as a father of multitudes, a father of many. You understand? And I will bring down the tabernacle of my covenant, the tabernacle of my al-kidan, my word agreement upon the earth, Seven generations, seven generations after Abraham, after Abraham. And it shall go round about with thy race. It shall go round about with thy, excuse me, with thy seed. 
and shall be salvation to thy race. So both thy seed and thy race. And afterward I will send my word, send my word for the salvation of Adam and his sons for Iva, forever. And at this moment, these who are thy kinsmen are evil men. Whoa, these who are your what, Abraham? Your family, your kinsmen are evil men or, in, the, in parentheses, a parenthesis here says, or rebels. They are amet enyoch. They are amet enyoch. They are rebelling against the God of Abraham, or they're rebelling against the true God, and it says, and my divinity, and my what divinity, which is true. Now, there is a residence for us as Rastafari and, and for the Ethiopian Rastafari and Ethiopian Hebrews at this very prophetic time, since we're now in the 81st year of the Redeemer, this is of our kinsman redeemer of Kedemawi Haile Selassie since the coronation. We're now in the 81st, the 81st year, and we can see now a reflection of this as well. Because it says, and at this moment, these who are of thy kinsmen, these who are related to you, in other words, even we as black people and as black Hebrews, many of those who are related to us, our kinsmen, who are our color but not our kind, are also rebels or evil men, and they're, they're rebelling against Yahweh's and the King of Kings' divinity, which is true. They have rejected. They have rejected the divinity of his imperial majesty, and therefore their own redemption and their connection with the true Jesus Christ, with our black Lord and Savior. And this is why they're worshiping the image of the beast. So you can see the, however you approach the truth, the truth is true, it's true, it's true. And as for thee, that day by day, they may not seduce thee. Come, get thee forth out of this land. He's saying so that if you stay around them, they're going to seduce you. They're going to con you. They're going to trick you. They're going to hoodwink you. They're going to bamboozle you. You understand? He says, come, get thee forth out of this land, the land of thy fathers. In other words, leave your own land and the land of your fathers because he was a black Assyrian. Some say Chaldean. We say he was a black Osirin or Osarin, uh, Ashurin from Assyria, Osoria, Osiria. You understand? You can, you, can, you can make sense out of that from many different perspectives, but let us move on. He's told to, to, to come, get thee forth out of this land, the land of thy fathers, into a land which I will show thee, and I will give it to thy seed after thee. Now it says right here to compare this with Genesis 12. In Genesis XIII, Genesis 13, verses 14 to 17. So now this is all part of the call, the Terry, Ya Abraham Terry, or the call of Abraham, the call of our ancestor Abraham, out of what they call Ur of the Chaldees. Ur of the Chaldees. Now it's interesting that some say that Chaldee actually means the demon people. We've seen some older biblical um, concordances, you know, where it explained the different names and verses and gives a little, some, some little hint. And we saw before, and we'll try to bring this forward to you, where, and you probably look it up, where, where in some of the older etymologies, like Gesenius, Gesenius, and some of those older um, interpreters and, 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 and scholars that they had said that Chaldees or the Chaldean, the Chaldeans, but more correctly, the Chaldeans were the demon people. Now, this would make a lot of sense from the Kibber and the guests concerning the covenant of Abraham. Now, he's told to, that the kinsmen at this moment, at this time, and that's the key thing, too, that at this particular moment, in that particular day and age, his kinsmen, his, 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 those who were of, of his color, racial type, but not of his kind, were evil men or were rebels, rebels to the, the, the true divinity of God 
in Christ or God in Christ in that time of the true God, in other words. Now, here it says, and Abraham made obeisance to God, to Ha Elohim. So he prostrated, Sigurd, Sigurd, Sigurd. He prostrated to the Almighty and was subject to his God. Not to their God, but to his God. So watch out when people say, we all worship the same God. Ask them, what is your God's name? What's the name of your God? If we all worship the same God, what's your God's name? It would be very interesting what answer they give, if they're even able to give answer. And God, or and Elohim, said to him, thy name shall be Abraham. Thy name shall be Abraham. And he gave him the salutation of peace, shalom, and went up into heaven. Whoa. So the true God gave Abraham a new name, right? So we have the new name of Abraham, right? The new name of Abraham. And it says that he gave him salutation of peace, the salamta of salam or the shalom, and, and maybe some other sign too, you understand? And went up into heaven. So the God of Abraham seems to be out of this world. And this makes sense now, why Yeshua HaMoshiach, our black Lord and Savior, said, my kingdom is not of this world, and why he ascended. So there's an there's a important link with this whole alien ET agenda, but there's a lot of trick knowledge, you know, you know, a lot of trick knowledge. They're afraid, the evildoers, the rebels are afraid of the so-called aliens. Not Abraham, not his seed, not his race, not his people. Probably one of the reasons that you don't hear a lot of black folks talking about, yeah, you know, I was abducted and they did all the No, we'd we be saying that the white man, the, the racist abducted us, you understand, 400 plus years ago. That's who abducted us. That's who conducted the experiments and still is doing these things to us. So, so you know, those aliens or whatnot may actually you know, be coming to help us out, if you think about it from a biblical Torah scriptural perspective. But here it says that he, the Elohim, gave him the salutation of peace and went up into heaven. And Abraham returned to his abode, and he took Sarah, or Sarah, his wife, and went forth, and did not go back to his father. So he went forward ever, backward never. He didn't go back to his pops, right? And his mother, and his mom, and his house, and his house, and his kinfolk, and his kinfolk. He didn't go back to them. And he forsook all for Elohim's sake. He forsook all. He, 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 he went forward. So this is the great faith of Abraham. This is why Abraham is the father you know, we could say the father, the template of, of, of the faithful. You understand? And he arrived in the city of Salem, of Salem, and dwelt there. And it says, and reigned, and reigned in righteousness, and did not transgress the commandment of Elohim. And Elohim blessed him exceedingly. That, that means enough. He gave him enough blessing. And the length, and at length, he possessed 318 stalwart servants, in other words, trained or armed servants, or some say men of war, who were trained in war, and who stood before him and performed his will, the will of our father Abraham. And they wore tunics. They wore tunics or kabas, we would say Bamarinya in the Ethiopic tradition, richly embroidered, richly embroidered with gold, and they had chains of gold about their necks. It's my miss on the hood stuff, right? They had some chains, some choppers, and, you know, were embroidered like Ethiopian garments, you know, like the king of kings, and belts of gold round about their loins. And they had crowns of gold on their heads, Rastafari. And by means of these men, Abraham vanquished his foe. By means of these trained servants, style with 318, he vanquished. That means he conquered them. You understand? They were, they, they were, they were, they were vanked. You know, they were vanquished. 
They were vonked and squashed. He squashed that. And it says, and Abraham, he died in glory in God and was more gracious and excellent than those who were before him. He was gracious and held in honor and highly and highly esteemed. Now, this is from the Kubra and the Gesh, the glory of kings, or in translation, the queen of Sheba and her only son, Menelik. Excuse me. And this is giving us a, a, basic, a basic summary. You understand? We're going to refer to some of the themes within our Torah portion and our studies, go to some of our sources, you know, and it was drink water from our own uh, cistern, you understand, our own cistern, you know, our own drinking gourd, our own drinking well. You understand, while we also study and see what the OJs or other Jews or others say and, and compare and contrast and find out whether, whether there's anything true, true, right, and exact there, you understand. Now, we're going to continue this. We're going to move uh, forward and now go through the traditional Torah portion reading and feeding momentarily and um, coming forward. So brothers and sisters, we'll give you the salutation of peace. Shalom Rastafari. Stay tuned. More to come, y'all willing. <laughs> 